I just wanted to kind of just cover a few basic things, mm -hmm. just so you have the experience of Medina, like practical stuff. Um, so the first thing you probably heard before, the Prophet ﷺ said that the salah in his masjid is worth 1,000 times more than a salah anywhere else except for Mecca. Which is interesting because what does that mean? Does that mean Mecca is more? Or more but just not 1,000 times? Or are they equal? Or is Medina better than Mecca but just not 1,000 times better than Mecca? The scholars actually discuss that. So we always assume Mecca is better. And there's another hadith that kind of supports 100,000. But it's actually a difference of opinion. But yes, so Masjid Nabawi, praying in Masjid Nabawi is a thousand times a reward. So off the bat, one thing, especially now with initial travel fatigue, Zuhur Asr being a little more tiring, you know, because you want to sleep after Fajr, you're staying up till sunrise. Don't miss Fadr Salah in the Masjid. All right, that's one of the main things you're here for, right? Is getting the ajr and the, 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 the benefit of praying in Masjid Nabawi. So as much as you can, make sure your roommates are setting alarms for each other, you're checking on each other, you're knocking on the door to wake each other up, because it's very uh, common that during travel, whether it's here or in Mecca, the fatigue sets in and you, you, you somebody mentioned it earlier, the regret will come for not pushing yourself, not for getting the extra hour of sleep. So definitely try and get all four prayers in the masjid. Now the prayer times, we sent um, a screenshot on, on, the, on, the, on the group. You'll see at the main entrances of the masjid, there's a lot of small doors, smaller doors, and there's real big ones. So right when we go out of the hotel, the massive entrance right in the middle, there's going to be a digital screen. If you want, right when you enter, if you turn around and look up. Uh, for the woman, I don't know where it is, but I'm assuming at the, the main door for you guys as well. And I'll have the prayer times, the adhan times. So you want to aim to be in the masjid before the adhan. All right, that's ideal. Typically, iqam, it's not, it's not exact, right? So fajr adhan, iqam is usually like 20 minutes. But it may be 10 minutes one day or maybe 15. And then the other salah are usually between 8 and 15 minutes, the iqama. And it varies. So just try and be there by that time. Um, I, I sent a group a text to the, to, the, to the chat is that for the guys, the back of the masjid fills up. And the outside of the masjid fills up. So maybe the aqama is about to go off or the adhan has gone off. You already see the masjid full on the outside. And you're thinking, let me just join the line here because the masjid is full. No, the masjid is not full. Just keep walking in. My teachers would say, even the aqama and the prayer has started and the lines are all full, you still keep walking in. Because you get the reward of being in the prayer while you're walking to the prayer, right? As you're walking to the prayer, you're getting the reward of being in prayer. So you're not missing out on the reward and you're filling up the, the, the further line. So you can walk into the masjid, the middle courtyard where the umbrellas are, some of you have been there already. That place usually has spots as well as to, the, each, to each wing on the right and left side in front of where the sister's prayer ends. Um, so prayer times are important. Try and get there before Adhan if you can. Um, the roof is available for the brothers as well. At nighttime, if you go at Fajr um, or Tahajjud time, it's a little chilly right now because of the wind. The wind blows decently strong. So if you're going to the roof at night, I would recommend a light jacket if you have or wearing socks because your feet will get cold. Um, but it's very nice because it's, it's much less crowded. So if you really want that personal time, um, the roof is a, is a good way to go. And that's brothers only. Um, so that's for Salah. Um, what else? Um, the, you'll see... You'll see um, tan colored water jugs stationed along, along the masjid. Those are all full of zamzam. Some of them will say on top, not cold, it'll be written in blue, not cold. So if you don't want cold water, if your throat's a little messed up and you want to stay with, you know, lukewarm, go ahead and take that one. You can take water bottles and fill that up. That's fine. Uh, but that's zamzam. And the Prophet says about zamzam, ma'u zamzam lima shuri bala. It has a benefit of whatever you drink it with intention of. So when you drink zamzam water, the sunnah is to have a dua that you want to make. Um, and you drink zamzam, you drink to your fill, and then you, and you, and you, and you, and, and you can make dua. And you can have the intention also for what you want. So if you want it for shifa, one of the sahaba, he didn't want to feel thirsty on the day of judgment. So you're drinking zamzam now to quench your thirst here. But his dua was, oh Allah, don't let me feel thirsty on the day of judgment. Let me drink from the hand of the Prophet ﷺ. Right? This is an example. And you can make whatever dua that you want. So zamzam is available. You can fill up your, your, um, your things. You have the, the, the string bags, right? The al-Maghrib string bags. In Medina, it's not as important. In Mecca, it's definitely much more important. Um, for your shoes So Medina there's racks everywhere So you can put your shoes But just remember that Each one is numbered But the numbers make no sense So you'll have 131 The next one's going to be like 1,225 So don't try and say Okay I'm, It's very common People always lose their shoes So you can either put it in your bag And keep it right in front of you Or put your bag on a shoe rack It's easier to identify um, If you're putting it in a shoe rack Just remember where you're putting it Because um, often people lose their shoes in Mecca, you definitely got to use your bag. When you're doing tawaf, of course, keep it with you. If you put it anywhere, khalas is gone. 
it's not people are stealing. It's just a culture. Like you just take whatever's available. You know, whatever <laughs> sandals you have there, there you just take. So just keep your shoes with you, your sandals with you. Can you wear shoes? Absolutely. You don't have to wear sandals. Obviously, when you're in for the men, when you're in haram is different. But generally, you can wear your shoes too. Um, uh, what else? There is going to be almost after every prayer there'll be a janaza. So the imam, you'll, you'll hear the, the, the guy who's repeating after the imam, he's going to say, As-salatu al mayti or mayitati or atfali or amwati, basically saying there's salah, janaza salah after. So Shaykh Sulaiman, he sent a video to the group. If you, if a lot of you guys were in travel at that time. Go back through the chat and look and watch that video about how to pray salat al-janaza. That's important. Because every single prayer, you're going to be praying salat al-janaza. Almost. Um, how do you follow the janaza? For the men, the women aren't allowed to go into the graveyard. You can go from the outside and say salam. For the men, you can go inside. The graveyard is only open after each prayer. And it's open immediately until all the bodies enter and the crowd that's with them enter and then they close the doors. And they're not able to get in. So if you go like 10 minutes after, if you want to do your adhkar, your adhkar al-sabah, after fajr, and then you go, you're probably not going to be able to go into Baqiyah. So if you want to go, um, do we have it on the schedule? Uh, a, a brother's yeah, Baqiyah visit? Wednesday, okay. So inshallah, Wednesday morning after Fajr, we're going to go into Baqiyah as a, as a group. If you want to go any prayer, basically what I would recommend you do is keep your shoes with you and pray to the front left of the masjid. Immediately after the prayer is done, you can wait for Salat al-Janazah, you pray Salat al-Janazah, and then grab your shoes and go out the door and start heading left. You'll see the crowds all going. You won't go the wrong way. Everybody's going the same direction. Left front is where you're going. So like northwest. I mean, I don't know if that's exactly north, but you, you, you know what I'm saying, like, Left, right towards the qibla. Left, um, <clears throat> and you'll just you'll go into Baqiyah, and then there's a, there's a big poster board on there. When you enter, that has a dua you make when you enter. So you make that dua for the for the deceased, and then you can follow the janaza. And the janaza in Baqiyah is very different than the janaza in America, or Canada, or Sweden, or wherever else you're coming from. Um, when my dad first came from India, uh, he wanted to take my mom to a park, and so he's driving around, and and um, he sees this beautiful green grass with flowers everywhere. So he pulls in. And it ended up being a graveyard. <laughs> but the graveyards in America are not meant to remind you about death. They're very pleasant. They're very beautiful. They're well maintained. They're like golf courses. The janazah here is very different. When you participate in the janazah and you get, get there and you start putting the dust, all the dirt rises up. There's like you're, you're surrounded by dust. And they have the lights on in the morning and nighttime. And then so you just literally see like a halo of a light. You see people's halos. And you're, it's almost like you're being engulfed in the dust itself and you almost feel like you're being buried. It's a very powerful, it's a very different experience. So definitely recommend for the brothers before you leave, don't miss the opportunity of following the janazah itself and going into Baqiyah. Um, as Sheikh Sidiman mentioned in the video, obviously there's a, you know, a, the reward of the mountain of Uhud, which inshallah you'll see on Tuesday, how big that is. Um, that is the reward for, for praying Salat al-Janazah, and then for following the janazah, you get an additional mountain of reward. So don't, don't miss out on that. <clears throat> um, the Rawdah, everybody has their appointments scheduled? Um, I'm going, any brothers, 2.30 a.m. tomorrow, today? A couple? 3.30, okay. So if, you're, if we're, the 2.30, we'll meet at 2 o'clock in the lobby, inshallah. Um, what's special about the Rawdah? Uh, and we'll, we'll talk maybe about some of this on the tour, I guess, about what, as we're going around the masjid, but just briefly, the Rawdah is part of the initial masjid, the original masjid, in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what he said was between his rooms and the mimbar is a garden, Rawdah, from the gardens of paradise. And so what does that mean? A garden from the gardens of paradise. So some scholars, they've, they've interpreted different ways. Some scholars say that, well, when you're in Jannah, you have whatever you ask for. Whatever you ask from Allah is given to you. Sometimes you don't even have to ask, right? And so they say that, well, similarly, just like in paradise, you'll have whatever you ask for. When you are in the rawdah and you make dua, your dua will also be given. You'll be given what you ask for. So it's a place where dua is answered. Some say that the people of Jannah are in serenity and security and tranquility. And similarly, the people who are in, Baqi, uh, in, in, in the Rawdah have that same feeling of tranquility and security. Some people say that it's, 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 some scholars say it's literally from Jannah. And so on the Day of Judgment, it will be raised up and be placed into Jannah. And so if you enter, some, one of the Salaf, he would make this dua that, Oh Allah, you allowed me to enter into Jannah in this dunya. When Allah's mercy, how much of the mercy of Allah is present in this whole world? 1% of the mercy Allah has created is here, right? 99% He has saved for the Akhirah. So He's saying, Oh Allah, if from this 1%, a fraction of this 1%, you, you admitted me into paradise in this dunya, 
will you then prevent me from entering into paradise in the hereafter? Right? And so when you're in, in the rawda and you're making dua to Allah, I want you to feel like your dua will be answered and I want you to feel like you are, you are in paradise. You are in paradise. So the rawda is important. You get, you get one shot at it you get the, the, because of the reservation system now. You get a 10-minute slot. Now, what I would recommend, a quick pro tip for the sisters and the brothers. When you are going, don't sit or choose your spot to be right in front of the mihrab for the men or right at the exit for where the men leave or where the women leave. Because at that seven minute mark, eight minute mark, they're gonna move you out. So what you wanna do is get to the side, to the back corner, whatever corner you can, and then pray your two rakahs, make dua, make sujood, whatever it is that you wanna do. And then they might tell you to move, and depending on the crowd, you might have the chance to just move two feet forward, and the guard moves around, and you pray another two rakahs. And you can, get, you can get 30 minutes, that's why I chose a 2.30 time slot, because in that time I've usually had Success staying for a long time. Inshallah ta'ala, we'll, we'll see how tonight goes. Hopefully we can get 30, 40, 45 minutes. My mom went um, the first night we came, Friday night, and she almost got an hour for the woman. Um, but she wasn't in the front right where the exit is. She was in the back corner. So just grab a good spot that you're not like right in the eyesight of the guards, and you can have more time, inshallah. Um, but, you know, avail of it. You know, um, the ayat that come to my mind when I go into the roda and, I, and, I, and I'm praying to rakaz, um, one of the ayat that comes at the beginning is Surah Fatah. Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. That we have opened for you a manifest opening, right? Inshallah ta'ala, hopefully we'll have a chance to talk about Surah Fatah um, during this trip, um, right? Then Allah says in those first five verses, He first tells the Messenger of Allah that Allah, لِيَغْفِرْ لَكَ مَا تَقَدَّمْ إِنْدَيْكُمْ وَمَا تَأَخَّرْ That your past and future sins are forgiven. And so the Sahaba, they went to the Messenger of Allah, they said, Oh Messenger of Allah, congratulations to you that you've had this amazing Fatah, this, this this blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so they said, what about for us? Allah says, Allah is going to help you and He's going to forgive you. All these things. So what about for us? And Allah says, Allah will enter the believers into paradise underneath which rivers flow. And Allah will wipe away all, all their sins. So the Messenger of Allah said, Allah has revealed this verse for you, just like He's given me this fatah, He's also given you this fatah. So when you enter into Rawda, what goes through my mind is, and everybody's different, your experiences, but I recite these ayat, hoping that Allah will make this true for me on the Day of Judgment. The other ayat that comes to mind is the end of Surah Zumar. Because when you're entering into the Rawda, you're going in these groups now, right? It's all by reservation. So you have your whatever X people, 50 people, 100 people that are going in at once. You're going into groups. And the Prophet ﷺ says that on the day of judgment, the gates of paradise are wider than the distance between just a shutter of the gates of paradise is 40 years of travel. And he says there will come upon this day, uh, on these, on, uh, uh, come upon, uh, a day will come upon these gates that it will be so crowded with believers trying to enter into Jannah. And so when you're entering to Rolda and this crowd and the sisters, right, you, you, we, we hear the stamp, my, my first time ever in Mesha Nebawi. Literally, I, the, what came to my mind was um, the Lion King, when Simba was in the valley, and all the, 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 the stampede that happened. Because as soon as they opened the thing, it's like a stampede, everybody's running. I was sitting next to it, there was reading the Quran, and like the earth was shaking, right? Because people are running in, getting the first spot they want to get. SubhanAllah. The groups of believers will be taken to Jannah, you know, by the fadl of Allah. So inshallah ta'ala, you're hoping, just like Allah has allowed you to enter into a, a piece of Jannah now in groups of believers, and inshallah ta'ala, we ask Allah to make us amongst a similar group who will be entering into the day of judgment, uh, paradise and day of judgment. So that's the road, another special part of Medina. Um, uh, what else? If you want, you'll notice that, you'll, you may notice that there'll be halaqat after salah. Sometimes big scholars. Um, we'll be sitting giving durus, it'll be in Arabic. Um, so you might hear Arabic playing somewhere or because they use microphones localized to each section of the masjid. If you want to sit in the halaqa, you're, 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 you're more than welcome to. It's in Arabic, of course, so if you speak Arabic. Um, but that's available to you as well, you'll find. Uh, what else? Sometimes you'll be, there'll be areas that are cordoned off for the woman. So if men are you're sitting in some spot, they might move you and say, no, the, the, we're clearing it out now for the woman, especially after Aisha. Um, and then lastly, uh, Baqiya, the graveyard, which we briefly talked about, you want to make sure you, you, you get there as well. So those are just kind of some, some quick things I wanted to hit that, that are... Yes, oh, of course. Uh, yes, uh, the, the most important thing, giving salam to the Prophet Of course, Prophet is buried right there in the room of Aisha. Um, 
Um, and when we do the tour, we'll, we'll talk about it, inshallah. Um, but um, this is your chance to not just, of course, anywhere you send salam upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi you might have had this already. You're going to Medina and your friends are telling you, can you give the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam my salam? Right? You've had that before? Well, and you know, when you say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, everybody Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? It, it reaches him wherever you are. Wherever you may be, it reaches the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he returns his salam to you. But obviously now is a chance to do it in person. Now what does that mean? Right? How, what, how, do you inter- how do you understand that? I think the best way to understand it is, is if you have, think of the dearest person to you who has passed away. Or the dearest person to you who has not passed away, imagine your feelings if they did pass away. And your feelings when you go to the grave, their grave, and make dua for them. That would be exponentially multiplied when you're doing it for the grave of the Prophet Right? None of you truly believe until I am more beloved to you than your parents, your children, and all of mankind, right? So you're visiting the grave of the most beloved. And inshallah ta'ala, we're, we're, we're hoping that throughout this trip, that love for the Messenger of Allah will develop and increase as we go through the seerah of the Messenger of Allah and whatever opportunities that we have. Um, so when you're going to say salam to the Prophet you're doing it, you're looking, literally standing in front of where he, where he breathed his last. And right next to him, you'll see for the men, so the men go from the front. The front wasn't added until, until the Khilafah of um, Uthman. That's when the Masjid expanded from the, from the right? Is that right? The Qibli side? Or Amr Khattab, he's expanded from the Qibli side. Amr Khattab is expanded from the Qibli side. So, so in the time of the Messenger of Allah, right when he passed away, there wasn't that front part where we walk to, from now to say salam. Where they would give salam from is where actually the woman gives salam from now. So where you're giving salam from is where the Sahaba used to give salam from. The men now walk in front. And now the masjid was expanded in the time of Ibn Khattab from the, from the Qibla direction. Um, and so you walk in front. And when you see you, from the, the men, you'll see three things. You're going to see um, a, uh, like three sections of a wall like this. Except they'll have like a green decoration. And then a second and then a third. And then on the second one, you're going to see a green sign saying Muhammad Rasulullah. So I said, you'll see Abu Bakr, you'll see Umar. So it's not the Prophet in the first, Abu Bakr in the second, Umar in the third. All three are in the second. So as you're going there, and you'll see it labeled. You say salam to the Prophet, you say salam to Abu Bakr, you say salam to Umar. And then, and then you just and you continue out. Um, and that takes you to the direction of Baqiya. So um, you could do that as much as you want, as frequently as you want. Um, for the men, you, go, you can go from the front. From the woman, the roll of time is when you get the closest. And besides that, of course, from the outside, you know, from looking at the green dome from the outside, you can do it from there as well. Um, How do you say salam? Any, any dua of salam that you like. How do you say it? Any dua of salam that you like. So the men can go through as many times as they want? Yeah. But like getting your time to pray and let all the... That's the, that's the booking. Now, how, how do you access it? You access, well, on the tour, we'll go through it. We'll show you where you get in from. So it's, um, because you can't just walk in from the, from the door. Bab, it's called Bab al-Salam because the gate of Salam, where you give Salam from Salam, you can't just walk in from there. They made this whole like maze to get through now. It's not that complicated. And they've shortened it considerably from where it was a few months ago. But um, uh, you, it's going to be on the front. If you're facing the masjid, the qibla is that way. The front right is where you're going to enter from just before um, just after, sorry, if you're facing the Qibla, just after the bathroom, just after the bathroom is where you'll enter from. And then you're going to have to wrap back around, make this little S-shape, and then you'll come in, and then you'll go walk through there. There is. For, for, so for the woman, they're very strict about the roda. Like if you don't have your reservation, it's a very unlikely they'll let you in. They're very strict. And before, you could just do screenshots or screen recordings. Now, they, they're literally checking your phone. Is it a screen recording? Is it your, your picture app? Or is it the actual app of the thing? Um, for the men, the, I've, this is my, since August of last year, so since COVID, this is my sixth trip, alhamdulillah. The last five, they've been very lax for the men. Um, I've heard this current trip right now, it's, they're, they're pretty strict. So I don't know. Um, but if you don't have it, you could try the screenshot thing. You could always just try talking English. If they ever give you trouble, the best thing to default to is speak only English and speak with an American accent. And say America. <laughs> then maybe they think you're like some American, you know, mesquite Muslim doesn't know anything about Islam, they let you in, you know? That, that, that happens sometimes. Um, that's my strategy. Um, it works. <laughs> yes. 
Sorry, say it again. So, no, it's open. The message is open. So it's, there's no group to Hajjah. There's two adhans for Fajr. So if you hear the adhan at 4.20 a.m., you're not late for prayer. That's at the Hajjah adhan. And then there's the adhan for Fajr at one hour, exactly one hour later. Um, so the message is open. There was a time when they were closing in the middle of the night, but now Alhamdulillah it's open 24-7. Um, so you can go um, whenever you like and pray as much as you like. And obviously, it's recommended to maximize it as much as you can. Yes. Um, so when you say follow, you can go out and see. There's just crowds of men running. So you're not going to be able to you know, obviously get in that crowd. But you can just basically go as close as you can to the wall. Um, and that's where you'll be. Um, and you can say salam there. But you'll see basically the men are running. And then you'll see the bodies come out. And then so uh, when you go say salam, you're going to see before the mihrab of the, where the imam stands, there's a door that sometimes is open. Um, that's where the, 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 the bodies go through. The bodies are there and they take them out from there and they go straight to Baqiyah. And you can jump on and you can try and hold it if you can. Um, there, I mentioned the dust. So you're going to get a lot of dust in your nose. You'll be, when you blow your nose, it'll be coming out real brown. You might cough up stuff. So if you want to wear a mask, it might be a good idea. Um, uh, but even then, if you, if, you don't, if, you, you don't, if you don't have an N95, you'll probably get dust in your nose. Uh, how to get to the front row of where the man is praying? I tried, I got to the maze area. I didn't know if that was uh, yeah, so the front row, um, I was told today, I don't know if right behind the, the, the imam they're allowing people right now, where we, where we say salam from. But if you want to get to, so today, and I'll show you guys in the tour, I prayed Asr in the house of Abu Bakr. It's pretty cool. Um, it's, uh, it's obviously the men's side, the women, unfortunately, you can't access that, that, that part. Um, but we'll talk about it on the tour. Um, so Bab Abu Bakr, which is the one right after Bab Salam, from the front, on the front right, um, you can enter from there. Sometimes it's closed when it's full, but between prayers, a lot of times it clears out. So you can get in there pretty easily. Like Dhuhr, after Dhuhr, it was like empty. Um, after Asr, it clears out. Basically, after every prayer except for Maghrib, it clears out. Yeah. Also, you go to door 37. Yeah. In that area, then that, that's where it is. I don't know exactly that's. From the left, yeah. So when you go towards the masjid, turn left and go wrap around. <clears throat> yeah. Sisters go early. Um, so part of what my mom got, the extra time, she went right after Aisha. Your time doesn't start till 9 officially, but they opened it up earlier, like 8.15, 8.30, so you can get in early potentially. Even if your pass says 9.30, they might let you in. Yeah. But what is, what, uh, what is it? Yeah, I, I, I don't know much, but whatever I know, I'll, I'll share inshallah. We'll share. Fifty yards. Very close. Yeah. So they don't let everyone in. They just let like the closest, the closest into it. Yeah, maybe like a couple minutes after the last body gets in, they close the gate. Okay. 